In this video I'll be covering all of the advanced drift techniques you will need to learn after getting the basics down. All of the techniques I'll be showing you in this video are vital and at the end I'll be giving you my number one technique that all drifters should learn. So make sure you keep watching until the end if you want to become a better drifter. In my original video we spoke about how oversteer is produced by spinning the tyres faster than the speed of the car. However, this also works in the opposite way. If the tyres suddenly start spinning slower than the speed of the car, this will also induce oversteer. So how do you make the rear tyres start spinning slower? Well, we will utilise something called shift lock. This is performed by letting the revs drop on downshift into a corner then releasing the clutch as fast as possible to put stress on the driveline to slow the rear tyres inducing oversteer. That was a mouthful. Let me show you how it's done. So we approach a corner, put the clutch in and downshift. We turn into the corner slightly then re-engage the clutch. The tyres will start spinning slower and the rear end will stick out. Now you just need to balance the car through the corner with throttle and you can upshift again if you need more revs. As you can imagine, this can be very damaging to the drivetrain, so you should use it sparingly if you are using realistic damage. However, if you drift without damage, feel free to use this technique until your heart is content. Up next is the braking drift. This is performed by trail braking into a corner. As you hit the brakes, the weight of the car is shifted to the front axle and lifted from the rear thus resulting in the rear tyres having significantly less grip. So if you brake while turning you can probably imagine what will happen. The rear end will lose traction completely and enter a slide. Let me show you an example. So once again we approach the corner as we turn in slightly. As we turn in we give a slight dab on the brake to unsettle the car. As the rear loses traction we release the brake and step on the throttle to get the rear tyres spinning and enter a drift. Too much trail braking can result in giving you too much angle and you will spin. However, if you brake too little, you can understeer and wash out of the corner. So you'll need to feel around for the right amount of trail braking needed for the car you picked. Following this is one of my personal favourites, the Kansai Drift. This is a high speed manoeuvre and is pretty hard to do. But before we get into this technique I want to take up 10 seconds of this video to remind you that less than 10% of my viewers are subscribed. So if you enjoy the video or find it helpful make sure you hit that subscribe button for more Assetto Corsa drifting videos and tutorials. Thank you. So the Kanzai is performed while the driver is entering a high speed corner, lifts their foot off the throttle for a split second to induce mild oversteer. Then the driver needs to meticulously, meticulous, the driver needs to meticulously balance the car in a drift through both steering and throttle motions. But be warned, you'll need a very balanced car to do this style of drifting. Therefore, the car will induce the oversteer itself. If the car you're using is too rearward balanced, there is a very good chance you'll simply lose control of the car and crash. Once again, let me show you how it's done. You can see we only do it on very high speed corners, going at a rapid pace. We approach the corner and lift off the throttle for less than a second, almost like an inverted blip. This unsettles the car. Now it's up to us to balance it in a drift. High speed manoeuvres are extremely hard and this technique takes quite a bit of practice, so don't worry if you can't get it down straight away. The next technique I'll be teaching you doesn't actually have a name, as far as I know, but it is one of the most used techniques in drifting. Earlier we covered the braking drift and how using the brake can put the car in oversteer, but what if I said that you could also utilise these physics mid drift? Well that is what this technique is all about. For example if we are drifting a sharp corner and realise we don't have enough angle to get around it, we can gently squeeze the brake to get the car rotating more. Not only will this give us more angle, but it will also slow the drift down, obviously. This technique requires left foot braking as you'll also need to use the throttle at the same time, so it may take some getting used to. Anyway, let me show you how it's done. 
Firstly, I'll show you the physics behind it with some donuts. So you can see we're pulling donuts with quite a large radius. However, once I slowly start to squeeze the brakes, you can see the radius of the donut decreases significantly. Now, if we put this into a practical use, we are drifting through a corner that we are going way too fast for, and it looks like we are about to wash out of the corner. However, if I squeeze the brake while still accelerating, the car slows down and the angle of the drift is increased, allowing us to pass through the corner safely. If you take a look at any advanced drifter in any server, they are more than likely utilizing this, even if they don't know it. It's almost a vital skill in drifting, but it takes a good driver to perfect it, as you need to left foot brake while still accelerating and heading sideways through a corner. This technique is the most gimmicky of the lot and can only be used in unique situations. This is the dirt drop. This is performed by dropping the rear tires off the road into the dirt to maintain or gain drift angle without losing power or speed. This technique is very useful for lower horsepower cars. It's a pretty simple concept but it's hard to pull off. Let me show you how it's done. So we enter the corner and push the car all the way to the edge of the track. We let the rear tyres dip off the track very slightly so they are in the dirt. When we hit the throttle very carefully this will give us more angle as compared to throttling on the grippy track. But it is very hard to hold a dirt drift, especially in a seto. So make sure you are very careful with the throttle inputs. This technique in the list is possibly the most vital of them all. This is the manji drift. Up until this point we've covered how to drift in my original video and the more advanced techniques. However, now we're going to cover a tricky technique you'll need to master to change directions while drifting, also known as transitioning. Transitioning is when you change direction whilst maintaining the drift by using the car's weight and momentum. Think of the rear of the car like a pendulum, swinging from side to side in a controlled manner. Each time you swing from one direction to the other, that's a transition. So how do you transition? As you approach the end of the corner and you are ready to transition, you'll need to rotate the car a little extra by throttling and inputting more steering angle. Once you are ready to transition, you should release the throttle and start turning the wheel in the opposite direction. You will shift the car's weight onto the front wheels. You then need to let the wheel slip through your hands as the car starts to turn in the opposite direction and catch it once you have enough angle to carry on drifting. Once you've caught the wheel, you can get back on the throttle and congratulations, you just transitioned. But not only can this technique be used to transition corners, but advanced drifters will also use the manji on straights. Using the manji on straights is an important part of advanced drifting as driving in a straight line just isn't that cool. But you also won't be setting yourself up nicely for the next corner. Manjing on straights is quite tricky at first, as there are no corners to focus on, but it's pretty much identical to doing it on corners. Once again, it just takes practice. Once you get a feel for transitioning from one direction to the next, you can link multiple corners and even drift straight sections of the track, known as manji drifting. So there you have it. Those are all the advanced drifting techniques that I use regularly. Hopefully you found them helpful, and now you're ready to hit the drift track and try them out yourselves. But before you click off, don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video helpful. Subscribe if you're new around here and want to see more drifting content. Oh, and if you're already an expert on a set of course of drifting, feel free to let me know in the comments. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.